in the year 2000X. On his 15th birthday, a child left home on his dangerous and epic quest to become the guy. Hey everyone, I'm Captain Forrest Falcon, and allow me to present you my brand new LP, which I have mentioned a couple times, but as you will see once we finish the Mega Man preview, it is... I want to be the guy, the movie, the game. Oh yeah, baby. So, if I'm going to tell you a little bit about this game at first, so to accurately describe this game, it would be to say that it is a really, really difficult game that is not very easy to complete. Especially your first time, chances are you're going to die numerous, numerous times. But if you can get past the difficulty, you'll find it's actually a really funny, great game with a heck of a lot of nostalgia. Like right off the bat, they throw you some Mega Man and now they throw you some Legend of Zelda. Many years ago, left world in dungeon to dungeon of doom. Now, young boy goes to defeat the guy and become the guy with his gun passed handed down by former grandfather the guy. Go find eight units. Now become the guy. Oh yes, yes baby. I'm looking forward to this. Yes. Yeah, so random stuff that appears in the game. <laughs> Ryu from Street Fighter and Hatuken. Yeah, and then some Zelda items. And then they just throw even more random stuff at you. The wannabe the guy. The kid. That's us. And then Link breaks it through to us. Most of this shit doesn't appear in this game, you stupid idiot. Okay, point taken. But you know what? Let's get started. So, I've got my couple files here. Yep, yeah, um, that hard file, that would be the first file that I played this game on. Don't let those deaths deceive you. Uh, that's rather inaccurate. That's deaths since I beat the game. Yeah, the real number was more like over 2,000. Yes. It takes a while to beat it the first time. And then I get surprisingly better the more I practice something. Who would guess that? Anyway, let's start off in the central area. Oh, and another great thing about this game is it has a freaking amazing soundtrack. I don't know about you, but if any of you guys are interested in the soundtrack, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put up uh, in annotations links to where the actual soundtrack and games they are from are, and you guys can check that out as we go along through this LP. So the one that we're listening to right now is from a game called Guilty Gear Isuka. It's a game I've never heard of, but apparently a lot of people mistake it for being a actually f original to this game. But no, it's from Guilty Gear Asuka. And by the way, activ activating that spike down there, that's going to be relevant to a little glitch I'm going to be showing off just a little bit down the road. So with my strategy for these cherries, it's mostly jump over the first, and then here you have a choice. You can do the epic thing and stand between the cherries, or you can try and make the cherries fall. Let's be suicidal. <laughs> Oh boy. Yeah, I had a feeling that wouldn't work. Especially on recording. You know how it is with LPR's Curse. You'll never get the good breaks. Especially not with a game like this. Oh no, we're gonna have to do numerous retries. Especially at uh, some of the more brutal sections. Oh come on, that was, that was ridiculous. Oh yeah, and I should probably let you listen to the uh, You Died soundtrack. Which, um... I can't necessarily, can't exactly remember where that's from right now. I think it might also be from Guilty Gear Asuka. So, I'll show you the easy way to do it. Yeah, it's really that easy. You just sort of swing in and out. Oh, and don't stand here because that cherry will kill you. You have to turn back, otherwise you'll die. Here you don't have to turn back, though, but they throw the trick at you that cherries fall up. So, but if you just jump and hold against there, you'll be perfectly fine. Now these um, are known as delicious fruit, as you may have seen in the opening cutscene that we just went through where it was showing Legend of Zelda items, but I like to call them cherries. Some people like to call them apples, but to each their own. Now this is a tricky jump here. This was probably one of the things that killed me the most in my first playthrough. 
It's This is at the first save point would normally be right here, but in this case it is not because this is very hard mode. And in very hard mode you don't get many breaks. So I like to land on this cloud between the middle and the far left. You'll see what I mean when I do this. Okay, so... Yeah, were you watching and paying attention? Because I'm not explaining that. But, just so you know, if you land right in the middle, then chances are you won't have enough to make that jump. And if you land at the edge, well, you'll have the common problem of you'll be in the air and lose your double jump, in which case you're also going to die. Now, did I remember to activate that glitch? Uh, yes, I did! <laughs> so, when you go and activate that spike over down beneath in the main area, it will actually come here first instead of the typical platform that just falls. And that way you can actually get a bit more time to just make it over there and not get crushed by the platform that falls. Oh, microphone's slipping a bit. But anyway, oh, whoa. Yeah, I almost died there. So traps to watch out for here, lightning, and this star, which is the only one in the game that falls like that. And now we get our first save point, which you'd think, oh, I can't hit that save point from here. Jump and shoot. Yes, you can. We've saved. So take advantage of save points that are horizontal away from you because, yeah, you can actually hit them from a really long ways away. Now, watch out for that spike in the middle here because as you can guess, this isn't as simple as it looks. Yep, they try to kill you with the spike and... We just died to Mario Paint! Hooray! Yeah, they love to throw nice little Easter eggs like that in here, so that makes this game so much more fun. Especially when the deaths... Some of the deaths are actually really funny and some are really epic as well. But yeah, save points that you can hit from across the room, that's actually your easy point because then it's just so much easier to just get across and through the room because you can save at one end, then save at the other one, and then you're done. Anyway, through here is actually going to be our first boss fight, so are you guys ready? Let's go and check this out. Dramatic silence. And the whole point, this sequence here, is I say that it's the game's way of telling you, Son, you have no idea what you have embarked on. Yeah, so for first boss, they set you up against Mike Tyson of Mike Tyson Punch-Out, a ridiculously hard boss, who I haven't had the honor of facing yet. So after listening to this little intro song, Instead of actually fighting him, let's commit suicide. That sounds like a good idea to me. <laughs> it's really cool, because in boss fights, a lot of times they have extra soundtracks. Like, this is this entire soundtrack from Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. Like, the losing song, and also others. Well, you know, like, just the match song and the introduction to a fight song. Anyway, to commit suicide, uh, what you press is you press the Q key. And now we encounter the famous problem of deaths break the game. Yes, this will happen lots. This will happen plenty of times where I have to, re I have to reset the game now. So I will be back in about a few seconds. Okay, so we are back. And so far we've had three deaths in this game. So for I want to be the guy, that's actually really, really good so far. Anyway, we were going to fight Mike Tyson and I'm gonna show off a glitch here by committing suicide while running up to the moment there. Now, the th neat thing about this trick is what actually happens is it doesn't cancel out the opening cutscene, so it will go through this cutscene as though you were still alive. And I don't think we want to watch this whole cutscene again, so I'm just gonna skip it. And... As you can see, you see those bullets there? That's actually us. We are now what I like to call a ghost. Yes, we are an invisible ghost. And the cool thing about being the ghost here against Mike Tyson is you can actually control him because he will stay right on top of you the whole time once you're defeated. Now, ghost form, it has some advantages. There are some bosses that you could actually kill this way legitimately in boss rush mode. 
but it's not very useful here. And one of the disadvantages of is that when you jump, uh, you can only jump a very little bit. You can't double jump or anything. Like, if you look here where the bolts are going, that's about as high as you can actually jump. Anyway, let's have some fun! Show me your moves! Yes! Okay, that's enough of that. Goodbye, Mike Tyson. Now we kick your butt. Yes, now is the time where we actually stop wasting time and actually come and do this battle. So, whenever he does that swinging motion, it means he's going to try and punch you. And you have to j you can avoid that by double jumping. But only on these higher platforms. If you try it down low there, it won't work. But then, once you get over it, you can just run and avoid it. And his weak point is when he does that weird expression on his face and for some reason cries flaming tears of fire. Which, I don't even know if it actually really hurts you. I never noticed it hurting you before. But, that's enough of you, Mike Tyson. You're already down and dead. Yeah, just like your typical punch-out boss or boss... Ugh, what am I saying? It's punch-out opponent. Oh, hello, Mario. How are you doing? Yeah, you knock them down three times in a round, and they are done and finished. Now, it's very important that once you see one of these red or orbs, you collect them... Once you collect those orbs, you come over here and save. Because that's the only signal that's actually going to indicate that the boss is defeated and then the boss won't appear again when we come here. So now what we are going to do is we are going to commit suicide! No we aren't. Yep, jump, land in the water, perfectly fine. Yeah, and you know I think that this is the only area in the entire game where there's water. Yeah, the entire game, and this is the only instance where you have an example of water physics. You will not see this anywhere else in the entire game. But you know, I think that's going to be enough for now, except that I will be showing off a little thing here. So you remember that main room that we went to? Well, if you actually come over here, you will find that this is a secret passage to the main room. And there's about two secret passages that we can take. There's also one on the other side. But we won't be taking that for now. Or we might, actually. Because tell you what, I'm going to let you guys choose which path I take next. So we can either go to the right here and continue on with what's commonly known as path one. Or, if I come over here, we can take what is known as path two right here. Or finally, we can take path three down here. So, I will let you guys decide that. So, next time we will just continue on with I Want to Be the Guy, and I will wait your guys' decision. And tell me what you think of this LP so far. If there's anything you want to see or point out, let me know, and I will do my best to just show everything I can about this game. So thank you guys for watching. I've been Captain Forest Falcon, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Be sore like a falcon.